Chapter 2, Working Jefferson County's Peaceful Fertile Lands. The highly profitable wheat fell to the scythe at the bower, where the young, tall, wiry Adam Stephen Dandridge took place in the line along with enslaved African Americans, John Pinko and Levin. Harvest crews helped from farm to farm. If the neighbors had not finished their harvest, the force was allowed to go and help them out, receiving for themselves the usual wages. In all the fields of corn, the outside rows were planted in a broom corn for the Negroes' use, and they spent the long winter evenings in making brooms, baskets, hampers, and split-bottom chairs, all of which found a ready sale in the country stores. The chairs were of all sizes, from the large porch chairs down to low sewing chairs and chairs for children. They managed to make them very comfortable, and they were substantial and lasted a lifetime. The cultural congressman, Alexander Bowler, may have not been on the crew, but the young men born of Philip and Hannah Thornton swung their scythes in unison at Fountain Rock Farm near Shepherdstown, and when possible, were part of Hugh Nelson's Pendleton's crew, farm and home at Westwood in the southern end of the county. Even after 10 of the African-American Thorntons in Jefferson County opted with support to take passage on the Bark Cora in May, 1855. And they sailed to Cape Palmas, Liberia, Africa to start anew. But here, wheat was coming off Edmund and Henrietta Lee's Oak Hill Farm on the Philadelphia Wagon Road, opposite and to the immediate west of Butler's Fountain Rock, relying on Nace and others to harvest and get the shocks of wheat in the barn. September would bring more indoor work for the county's farms. The cloth and yarn for winter work were brought home from the factory along the river and the work of making up began and was only finished at Christmas. In every household there was a woman who could cut out the garments and all the younger girls had been taught how to sew and knit. During the year, all the girls in clean frocks assembled in some room in the great house every morning, and the class of sewers and knitters was presided over by some bespectacled old Negro woman whose word was law to the girls. The work of making up the clothing and knitting yarn socks went on under her supervision, and at Christmas, Every man and woman on the place appeared in new clothes, new shoes, and warm woolen stockings. Every man had an overcoat every four years, and a flannel hack jacket called by the Negroes the warmest to wear under his waistcoat in cold weather. <laughs> 